all right guys um this is fortunate fast track um the lab i recorded um so that one or two people can learn um something new so this is tax 2.1 this lab 2.1 that's intrusion prevention system we'll be setting up our intrusion prevention system on FortiGate. Fortinet delivers IPS technology with the industry validated and recognized FortiGate platform. FortiGate Security Processor Unit, that's SPU, provides unparalleled performance along with FortiGate Labs industry leading threat intelligence, creating an IPS solution with proven success in protecting from known and zero day threats. In this lab exercise, you will configure a custom IPS sensor. Enable IPS inspection on firewall policy and verify its effectiveness against an RDP force attack. Case study for IPS Acme Corp uses a Windows server for remote desktop access to their network. While this is not considered a best practice, it is vital to their business and needs to be open from the internet. Using the malware server located on the internet, a hacker performs a random port scan and discovers port TCP3389 is open on the IP address 100.65.0.10 for the gate's external IP. Without a valid set of credentials to the server, they will try to brute force an attack to gain access. For this objective, we will be working on the root for the gate edge. Using the security profile intrusion prevention section, we will need to enable and customize a weight based IPS signature to block a Microsoft RDP brute force attack and quarantine the attacker's IP address. <coughs> so, uh, we'll go back to our FortiGate, um, which is the FortiGate Edge. Um, then we launch, um, launch the device. So to successfully complete this objective, we'll need to edit the IPS sensor profile defaults and enable the correct weight-based IPS signature. The signature should initiate a block of the attacker source IP address to, for 10 minutes after multiple RDP brute force requests are launched at a rate of three times in 120 seconds by the attacker. Um, go straight to uh, security profile then um, intrusion prevention don't forget you are modifying the default uh, profile then um, you create new after um, clicking that just let it load then the type will be signature um, so the signature um, then come to action block then status um, will be enabled then with base settings we are going to specify then um, the threshold will be set to 3 just like we were instructed um, <coughs> then we we'll look for the RDP uh, signature for Microsoft um, we are going to search for it in the filter bar and um, select it. Scroll down, uh, scroll down, scroll down. Oh, no, I think it's up. Yeah, I think no, 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 yeah, no. Okay, um, yes, add source. Then we specify the duration as 120. Um, then the track by which it will be the source IP, yes, source IP, then okay. So, um, okay, um, I think the action is with search to quarantine. No, let me follow um, the instruction. Then the minutes for quarantine is just 10 minutes, um, okay, okay. So, after setting um, also, we are going to move this um, RDP, um, this rule, 
they are going to move it up so that it will take up precedence over the others. Then, um, since we um, edited the defaults, we just click OK. So we have our default profile um, edited. So now that um, we have configured the IPS sensor, it will need to be assigned to a firewall policy in the fourth gate to take action against the attack. You should apply the configured IPS profile to the appropriate firewall policy. So to successfully complete this objective, we we'll need to apply the IPS sensor profile default to the inbound traffic policy to the RDP server. So we we'll move to the policy and object, then the firewall policy. We have a pre-configured um, policies. Then we look for the one that is um, looking for that. Um, the um, so here we have from the internet to the local area network of our organizations. Then um, we have the source as all RDP as destination. So um, since RDP is uh, our destination, which is the destination server, we could scroll down and apply the um, IPS um profile that we just configured which is the default then we apply it and click ok um okay um intentionally repeating login attempts with different credentials in a short period of time is considered a brute force attack in this exercise you will mimic a malicious actor by initiating a brute force attack against the rtp service on the acme corp system the tool used in this exercise will connect the external IP of FortiGate Edge on port TCP3389 and use a random username and password combination in an attempt to get access to the system. So um, we we'll return to the last main page um, and click the malware server from sidebar menu and insert um, the username and password. So let's go to the malware server open it um, then what we we'll do now is um, the username and password is david and fortinet1 which i think has been has been used uh, has been used to login then we we'll click the the icon um, of the program we are going to use to run um, the brute force attack that's the remina that's the remina hub um, so we double click then um, let's check again what I'm meant to do. Um, then we double click the RDP um, to simulate the attack. If you are asked for the credential, you just click OK. Then we double click and we click Yes. Then um, like three times, then click OK. This um, connection is already initializing. We are connecting to the RDP server with a with an app with a um, different username and password um, of um, of the server itself so we are trying to to brute force um, the server perhaps we can gain access um, with the credentials we have um, so we lost connection we close we are going to repeat it again you know, don't forget we set the threshold on the 40 gate as, um, as 3. That means um, after the third time, we won't be able to even connect to the RDB server again. So, um, let's wait again for this certain connection of lost um, connection to the RDB server. Close. Try it one more time. Don't forget this is a brute force um, attempt against the RDP server. So this is the last time we're trying it if we can gain access. We just have to close this. I'm gonna check. So we'll check our fourth gate to confirm whether um, this IPS that we configured worked. I'm not so to verify um, what just happened um, in on our network um, we have to um, go to um, dashboard go to the dashboard um, and go to users and devices then you know we set our route to quarantine any form of malicious behavior then go to quarantine 
they will see this as that this IP address that was trying to put force our server has been banned. So, so we can also go to just you can remove all um, you can remove the IP address for for future reference. Then go to log and report for traffic. You no, know? and go to the IPS um, intrusion log, IPS uh, intrusion prevention log. Double click the log, and you can see. Uh, a clear detail of what just happened. You can see um, the threat level, 